Hello and welcome. This is Nationwide reaching you on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Lami Ali. This broadcast is being streamed live on YouTube and on our website, nca.ng slash live and other social media handles that show on your screen. The Commander-in-Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, has approved the payment of Security Department Allowances, SDA, to the serving retired military officers and personnel in a statement. The Special Assistant to the Minister of Defense on Media and Publicity, Mohammed Abdul Qadir, says the Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Salihi Magashi, highlighted the details for the payments. The sum of 134,749,953,243 Naira 69 Kobo is to be paid to earlier excluded veterans who retired before 9th November 2017 while the outstanding SDA allowance will be, will be paid over a period of three to five years. On modalities for the payments, the Defence Minister says steps have been taken to facilitate seamless payments of the SDA to qualified veterans through the review of the effective dates of the Manual for Financial Administration, MAFA 2017, to be handled by the Defence Headquarters, while the verification of veterans for the payments will be done by the Military Pensions Board. And the Nigerian army is enhancing its peace support operations with capacity building and other strategies. The Chief of Operations, Nigerian Army, Major General Ulufemi Akinjobi, made this known as the closing ceremony of the Made in Nigerian Army Peace Support Operations Seminar held at the Nigerian Army War College, Abuja, noting that the military is mindful of the emerging internal security challenges. While the Nigerian Army has renewed its drive at upscaling its participation in peace support operations, we are not oblivious of the myriad of security challenges across Nigeria. Therefore, the Nigerian Army will continue to balance its participation in peace support operations vis-à-vis -vis the ongoing internal security issues we have. This is also considering that our internal security operations could be supported from Accra to Nigeria from the United Nations, thereby augmenting the federal government of Nigeria's support to the Nigerian Army. Participants from military and paramilitary security agencies express confidence that the program will promote synergy and improve joint operations among security agencies to stem internal security threats in different parts of the country. Assist, you know, in you know, very robust coordination and cooperation in you know, in future operations that we may involve, get involved in in peacekeeping operations. I think the popular discourse is that because we are facing all these challenges, we don't need to participate in peace support operations anymore. But I think the challenges of this time show us that there's actually a connection between our internal challenges and the ones that are happening with our neighbors and in the international community. So I think it's, it's important that we're gathered over these three days to look at these issues together. The seminar is focusing on Nigeria in contemporary peace support operations environments. And in order to enhance the provision of security in Abuja, the nation's capital city, the FCT administration has taken steps to bolster the G7 security operations, which involve collaboration with states that are contiguous to the FCT. The FCT Commissioner of Police, Sunday Babaji, gave this indication during the monthly FCT Security Committee meeting in Abuja. Unuze Yakubo has the details. The FCT Security Committee meeting was chaired by the FCT Minister Muhammad Musa Bildo. After intensive deliberations at the meeting, the FCT Commissioner of Police, Babaji Sunday, 
in an interview disclosed that the reinvigoration of the G7 security operations will see to the commencement of security actions and procedures by members of the G7. This will involve taking the fight to the bandits and terrorists in their camps, mostly located in states bordering the FCT. He, however, solicited the cooperation of residents of the FCT by providing actionable and timely intelligence to the security agencies and also to be security conscious at all times. Minister of FCT has approved the commencement of G7 operation immediately so that we take the fight to the bandits not to allow them to come to the FCT. I met uh, with some security commissioners in the neighboring states, for instance, Niger State, and they have guaranteed us that they are going to participate in the G7 operation. They even guaranteed that we assist us with some equipment if we need. The meeting had in attendance heads of the various military formations and paramilitary organizations in the FCT, religious and traditional leaders, as well as the area council chairman. Onuze Yakubu. NT News. Amid another security threat, Ondo State Governor Uluwaru Simia Kiridulu is reassuring the people of the state of government's commitment to securing lives and property. Governor Kiridulu restated this from the scene of the Owa construction company attack, where he urged the people of the community to go about their normal activities as the situation is under control. Abiola Ariyo has the details. Greenberg Construction Company, which has over 100 workers, was recently attacked, leaving two persons injured and currently receiving treatment at the Federal Medical Center. So, scared to us that the intention of the terrorists was to attack the one or two equipment here, which they did. I'm sure they'll have shown part of uh, where they have their disposal. Affected the tire and probably the shot at uh, the windscreen of one door. Governor Akredolu, while lamenting the incident, said the construction company has been in our community for over five years because of the peace they enjoy. This is not one that will send unnecessary panic or fear into the mind of our people. They should not panic. The governor, while reassuring of government's determination to provide adequate security, emphasized that his administration will continue to protect lives and property of the citizenry across the three senatorial districts of Ondo State. In Owo, Abiola Rio, NTA News. Still on security, the Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe has cleared the air on claims of invasion and killings in Igbomuturu community of Bayelsa State. The commander, Rear Admiral Aminu Hassan, said officers and men in the course of its mandate to stamp out all thieves and illegal bankers conducted themselves professionally just as they recovered arms and other exhibits in an illegal refining camp in the area. Ibn Imizichimiyula reports. The illegal crude oil refining camp in Iwomotaro community in southern Ijo local government area of Bayoso State is one of other camps discovered by the Joint Tax Force. About 1.5 kilometers away from the community, the troops during ease operations recovered a 200 horsepower speedboat, a pistol, military camouflage, among others. Commander Joint Tax Force Operation Delta Save, Rear Admiral Aminu Asan, in an interview with journalists said officers and men will not succumb to blackmail and sparrows allegations. In our own arrangements to secure that pipeline, we have deployed to that area to hold the ground to make sure that we put a full stop to the activities of the crude oil thieves and uh, other illegalities within the area. Now, the criminals are not happy with that, and they go about doing whatever they are doing, perhaps trying to smear the character of the JTF. On the attachment to a surveillance contractor, the Joint Tax Force commander reacted thus. Nobody, no surveillance contractor, no surveillance outfits, will ever use us against any member of the community or against the people. No. We are here to protect the people. 
and anywhere we see injustice we will say it he reiterated the commitment of the jtf to the protection of lives and critical national assets ebinimi zitimiola nta news President Muhammadu Buhari congratulates Archbishop Daniel Oku, the General Superintendent of Christ Holy Church Odozi Obudu, on his election as the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria. The President notes that the election of Most Reverend Oku by the very important Christian body is a testament to his devotion to the Church of God in the country and beyond. His distinguished vocation as a Christian leader and abiding commitments to promoting ecumenism and interface dialogue, acknowledging the role can plays in fostering religious unity and harmony, and fond memories of his interactions with Ken leadership. The president trusts that the incoming president will continue to provide the needed leadership for the church, affirming the scriptural truth that they all may be one. John 17, verse 21a. While praying that the tenure of Archbishop Oko in this new phase of ministry will be marked with success, the president urges Khan to support him during his tenure. Now, the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, wants Nigerians to remain united amid security challenges for the progress of the country. The SGF stated this during the valedictory church service in honor of outgoing president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Ken, Dr. Samson Ayokule. Joseph would send has the details. Christian hymns setting up the atmosphere for the validatory service for Dr. Samson Ayokunle, who served as president of the Christian Association of Nigeria for six years. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boz Mustafa, and other personalities who attended the event focused their messages on the strength of unity in trying moments. The, the church was the custodian of wisdom and knowledge. My prayer is that the church, even in times like this, must return to its primary responsibility of praying for the nation, of giving direction to the nation. Remember all of us who are in public office in prayers to use our office I use public money for public goods. Our voices are no longer the same, both in the church and concerning the people of Nigeria. The various ethnic nationalities are singing in the other tombs. Let us rise up and work with God to ensure that we serve Him and obey Him. We need to begin to solve problems that have led Nigerians to. To, to, to go into the crime. Dr. Ayo was elected camp president in 2016 and re-elected for the second term in office after the then mandatory three years. In Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. It's time to join Michael in Lagos for updates from that zone. Hello, Michael. Hello, Lamy. Perennial flooding in Lagos has continued to pose a threat to residents. Despite associated risk and disasters, allegations are aware that many of the unfriendly environmental actions aggravate flooding in the state. Anodanos will tell us why and solutions proffered by concerned authorities to mitigate flooding in the metropolis. Three weeks after days of rainfall that climaxed on the 9th of July with a series of disasters, some Lagosians are still agonized and counting their losses. It's raining like this. I can't stay inside the house with my kids. My kids cannot stay inside. Even if I enter the city room, the water will pass my waist. All the property that I chartered motor to carry from Ijebu, I, I lose everything because of this flood. In Lagos alone, five li lives were lost, including three children from the same parents. My respondents blamed this on the state of canals and drainage channels in the state. Water just comes back from the canal and flows into the street and overtakes the street. Their claim may be right or not. However, some conspicuous pointers speak volumes. 
These drains, for instance, connected to several canals are barely effective. The width of the canal now, we cannot establish it because houses have been built on it. Just all around, it, all, all around here, so because it's from here, even down to the other side of the estate. The issue is, don't build at all on a flood plain area. Flood plain area means the right of way. The water must find its natural course. Once you obstruct the water, and if it gets to a level, it will take its own course. This canal at Iwaya area of Lagos, these respondents agree, is what a normal canal should look like. They told all the houses beside the canal that they should give them 15 feet both sides. Assuming lawman wanted to come and park the canals, their motor will be working on that 15 feet, 15 feet. So they will, it will be easier for them to park. So that is what we are still expecting government to come and do for our canal here. Until that happens, Lagosians fear they may have to continue to grapple with the challenge of perennial flooding in the state. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NPA News. As a factor of production, raw materials impact negatively on the price of a commodity, especially when they are not readily available or easily accessible. A sector where this scenario is currently playing out is the bread industry, where a major shortfall in the supply of wheat flour is now a national concern. In the support, Ruth Ariel Samuel takes a look at how bakers in the country are coping and what alternatives are there on the table. Bread is one thing we Nigerians don't joke about. Especially me, I don't joke about bread. According to statistics, a total of about 10 million loaves of bread is produced annually in about a million bakeries spread across the country. While this record explains how the bakery subsector dominated by bread contributes to national economy, it lacks the capacity to soothe Nigerians who can now barely cope with the rising cost of the food item. For instance, a loaf of bread which once sold for about 150 to 500 naira now goes for between 300 to 1000 naira. And the cost of other pastries too has gone up due to the increase in cost of wheat. The bread they really affect us. Sea bread for 250, sea bread 100 naira. Olubumi Olua Rotimi runs a bakery in Lagos. While offerings from her bakery are much in demand, Bumi, like many other operators in the sector, is bothered about a spike in the cost of wheat flour, the chief ingredient in bread baking, and the sharp decline in her profit margin. The flour that we used to buy for 14,000, 15,000 is now a whooping 28,500. That is if we are even buying at a good uh, at a good price. The ripple effect of all these things is is not so fascinating for us. So because we have to maintain quality, we have not um compromised we have decided to reduce the size and when reducing the size people complain that the cakes are small with an end to the ongoing war between ukraine and russia two powerhouses in grain production not anywhere in sight yet shortfalls in wheat supply remains an unsavory reality making the search for homegrown alternative a must another alternative that i know is available in nigeria is is the red potato the red potato paste, I've read about it, Some um, a couple of other bakers have told me about it. But up till now, it is not readily available in the country for us to use. Along with other indicators, current insufficiency in wheat flour supply brings into sharp focus the imperative of food security in the country. Ruth Ariel Samuel. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for update. Time for some messages and when we return, Nationwide continues with comfort from our Enugu Network Center. Please stay. <laughs> African College of Physicians, Nigeria chapter, gathered in Enugu State to deliberate on ways of tackling the emerging health issues in the public health sector. Mina Adobe Ukoba to report that the theme of the event is focused on building a resilient health system, addressing the impact of emerging and re-emerging pandemics. The CMD, University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, UNTH Enugu, 
said the theme is apt as it will address salient issues witnessed by physicians in Nigeria. The basic takeaway here is how we're going to strengthen the health system in such a way that will make advocacies to government, you know, to uh, provide more equipment, provide better uh, service conditions for the doctor so that we can reduce the push factors that are pushing the doctors away from the country. Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Abuja, called on the professionals to reverse the trend of the emerging health challenges like vaccine resistance by building a resilient health system that will withstand emerging and re-emerging health challenges of the country. As your health system is already considered weak and fragile, fraud and challenges coming across the benefits being got from the system. The team, which has a mandate to, among other things, ensure a healthy society, deemed it necessary to come together and deliberate on how to build a formidable health system in Nigeria and West Africa, as well as find lasting solutions to medical brain drain and vaccine resistance. In Enugu, Minna Adobe Kobasi, NTA News. The Enugu State Justice Reform Team Committee on traffic menace and related offenses has held a town hall meeting on the traffic situation in Enugu Metropolis. Shimaroke who reports that the forum is in forefront to the reformative agenda of the state justice reform team. Traffic congestion, abuse, disobedience to traffic rules have become a common phenomenon and has almost assumed a nuisance level in Enugu Metropolis. The Enugu State Government, in recognition of the importance of transport sector and the development of the state, constituted the Justice Reform Team on Traffic Menace to look into the possible causes of traffic congestion and prefer solutions to the problem through a legal framework. <laughs> The Permanent Secretary, Enugu State Ministry of Transport, maintained that strong synergy among traffic regulatory officers in the state will be instrumental to a sustainable reduction of the menace. And there are still too many human factors in Enugu to have very bad orientation. People don't want to obey traffic rules. Relevant regulatory agencies in the transport sector took turns to provide ideas to the eradication of the prevalent problem. It needs to be told. The kind of is over. In resolution, a committee comprising of stakeholders in the transport sector was inaugurated to draft a law and other necessary steps for the actualization of outcomes of the meeting. In Enugu, Chimaroke Ugu, NTA News. And that's the contribution from Enugu is back to Lami in Abuja for more reports on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Many thanks, Comfort. Now, President Mahmoud Buhari has approved the appointment of Salisu Mohamed Nahiru as Pioneer Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the National Council on Climate Change. As part of his climate change agenda, President Mohamed Buhari made a commitment for Nigeria to achieve net zero emission by 2060 in line with the goals of the Paris Agreement. In this regard, President Mohamed Buhari expects the new Director General to drive the implementation of Nigeria's climate change agenda and the National Climate Change Action Plan, including the development of a carbon market framework and a national adaptation plan, which will be in sync with the aspirations enshrined in Nigeria's nationally determined contributions. The appointment takes effect from 25th July 2022. Now the global population is projected to reach 8 billion on the 15th of November this year. With Nigeria's population estimated at more than 216 million people, key players in population management are strengthening efforts to harness potential of rapid population growth towards achieving demographic dividends and sustainable development goals. Olushe Adiapo 
has the story. Nigeria is among eight countries sustaining the world population growth and by 2050, its population is estimated to reach 400 million. While each country faces its own unique set of population challenges and opportunities, Nigeria's current fertility rate is put at 5.3, becoming youth population and rapid urbanization with high unemployment and security issues. Nigeria must accelerate efforts to ensure greater bodily autonomy for the women and girls to ensure they will harness the benefits of our fast-growing population. Only when each of us has the power to make this fundamental decision about our health, bodies, and futures. The federal government of Nigeria is a catalyst to support the state government, but the state government is responsible for the provision of services for their citizens, all health services, including family planning. For these population managers protecting the rights and choices of women and girls is paramount since they are actively involved in childbearing. To have the right information, evidence or data for measuring and uh, predicting likely demographic, demographic shifts, we need to hold a census that will provide current, reliable and acceptable data. The National Population Commission and its partners are resolute that the coming population and housing census will produce valid data. Nigeria needs to inform decisions in Abuja, Olusheye, Adiagbo, and C News. And federal government agencies responsible for implementing excise duties have engaged contributors in the telecommunications industry to deepen their understanding on the amended section of the Customs and Excise Tariff Consolidation Act. The Act demands a 5% excise duty on telecom services. Chimdimba Ndibusi reports. The Finance Act of 2020 introduced excise duty on telecommunications services. First of June 2022 was to be the D-Day to kickstart the 5% payment by all telecommunications operators on both prepaid and postpaid services. But some concerns raised needed to be clarified. So. The agencies responsible for collecting this excise duty are interfacing with all involved in the telecom business to achieve a seamless implementation. We are responsible for ensuring that industry stakeholders understand their fiscal and other obligations. We're not making as much revenue as we're supposed to make from uh, oil as we used to be because of the global trend. Attention is shifting gradually to on oil revenue. Example is, let's say, okay, let's, the value of the services you render, you is 1,000 Naira. For us to calculate that, we calculate 5% of that 1,000, which is going to give us 50 Naira. At the first of end of the month, that's after 12 midnight, you can pay. We'll collect it. You can pay on the first. But you can't pay later than 21st of the further month. However, telecommunication operators say they are still grappling with payment of other taxes and a new one will lead to job losses. They are also pushing the cost to the subscribers. Though new in Nigeria, tax on telecom services is being practiced in other countries, some even at rates higher than that of Nigeria. In Abuja, Chimdima Ndubisi, NTA News. Minister of Labour and Employment, Senator Chris Ngege, is tasking companies as some wealthy nations to key into the Nigerian social protection policies to end child labour. The minister made the call at a media engagement to mark this year's World Day Against Child Labour. Ike Chukundukwe reports. UNICEF pulls the number of Nigerian children engaged in child labor at over 22 million, representing one child in every 10 children. UNICEF and the International Labor Organization are pleased 
with the Nigerian social protection policies, especially the school feeding program, stating that much still needs to be done. We also want to recognize the efforts by the government of Nigeria in terms of strengthening its social protection coverage and social security system by implementing several measures to ensure that coverage is improved. Social protection continues to be a very strong and vital strategy for addressing poverty across the world, and Nigeria is no exception. To have a strong social protection system, we need to have evidence, and part of that evidence includes evidence on the situation of children in Nigeria. So this school program have helped us draw children into school. It has also helped us give them nutritious food so that they can have healthy goods. Stakeholders are leveraging on the theme of this year's celebration, the universal social protection to end child labor to raise awareness on the dangers of child labor in Nigeria. Ike Chukundukwe, NTNU. And Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu has demonstrated further commitments to ending gender-based violence in the state by signing into law a bill for the protection of child rights and that of prohibiting violence against individuals. Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports. The two bills signed into law are the prohibiting violence against individuals and the bills for the protection of child's rights. The prohibiting violence bill is to eliminate violence in private and public and prohibits all forms of violence against individuals with maximum protection, effective remedy and punishment of offenders. Equally, the bill for the protection of child's rights will address issues affecting children taking cognizance to religious and traditional factors. Governor Bagudu explained that the action will further demonstrate to the international community the commitment of Kebis State to effectively apply the law against gender violence and strengthen the protection of children. The governor who expressed confidence that the laws will be beneficial to the people of this state also acknowledged the contributions of the state assembly, traditional and religious leaders among numerous stakeholders that ensure this bill sees the light of the day. And Brunin Kebi, Sumana Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. Now the federal government is strengthening its social network towards the enhancement of welfare for the elderly through inclusive policy drive as the National Senior Citizen Centre commemorates its first year anniversary, Ian Ray John reports. About 12.5% of the global citizens are said to be within the circle of the aged population with increasing advocacy for their welfare and social security. Nigeria is not an exception of the sad statistics and the matching words with action. The federal government is designing more platforms to uplift their lives and status under the mandate of the National Senior Citizens Center. We work together in the implementation of the policies and strategies on aging as we all look forward to enhancing the dignity, capacities, security, and well-being of all that persons. Thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for bringing in on board this very important center. The theme, Cascading Innovative Strategy Programs, Partnerships, and Stakeholders Engagement indicates that NSCC is now adequately positioned to meet its obligations. And to further demonstrate strong will in carrying out innovative reforms, the center's head office and other committees were inaugurated, with the NTA as one of the awardees and strategic partner in meeting the federal government's target for senior citizens. In Abuja, Ian Ray John, NTA News. In the meantime, critical actors on aging policy and plans at a consultative forum convened by the National Senior Citizen Centre are mapping ways to strengthen inclusion of the elderly in national discourse by strengthening partnership with the state and local governments in line with the Senior Citizens Act 2017 and the National Policy on Aging 2022, Elizabeth Omarui reports. A World Health Organization report on aging shows that 
by 2050, the world's population of people aged 60 years and older will double the number of persons aged 80 years. The multiplicity of this demographic data informed this meeting Make to profile the needs of the elderly, improve integration and, and inclusion see the results. in all spheres. Citizen Center, they deserve our commendation. They deserve our encouragement. The minister, the permanent secretary, and the rest of us at the headquarters were there alongside other agencies to see that the mandate you are given, it is actually carried out to the letter. The Director General, National Change Senior Citizens Center, the way insists we look at all the people, that investment in all the persons is the catalyst for building a prosperous nation for all. If you financially include them, and you, you know, you of, of skill, and then you 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 build their capacity, they can produce some more. So the National Senior Citizen Center is positioned to awaken people's, you know, understanding and sensitivity to the beautiful contributions that older people are making. Issues bordering on integrated care, livelihood development, and political participation were raised, they unanimously recommend domestication of friendly policies to address the myriad of problems confronting all the persons in Nigeria. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. An information guide to enable migrant workers move freely, work in communities of their choice, or return to their country of origin without being susceptible to exploitation has been unveiled in Abuja. The information guide, jointly packaged by the Ministry of Labor, the NLC and ILO, is to assist in the process of reintegrating returning migrants to their respective societies. The trade union information guide had been formulated to contribute and to complement the standard operating procedure on return and integration already developed by the federal government. It is a worker-friendly guide that places migrant workers at the core and provide necessary link to facilitate an easy return and reintegration. Labour is confident that the information guide will serve as a qualitative contribution to ensuring a comfortable and dignified return and a successful readmission and reintegration of returning migrants and migrant workers. Sokoto is where we go next to John Nain Aisha as we have reports from that end. Hello Nana, it's over to you. Lami and welcome everybody to Sokoto. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, says provision of adequate shelter to the people can only be guaranteed by a strong partnership between government agencies and private investors in housing sector. Alhatu Abdullahi reports that the minister made the disclosure at the 11th National Council meeting on lands, housing and urban development held in Sokoto, the seat of the caliphate. The aim of the National Council meeting is to, among other things, review and brainstorm on issues surrounding the housing sector in the country. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, stated that housing should be seen beyond ownership, but improving rent process, especially for the working class through legislative processes to conform with salary payment to make it more easier for tenants. The problem, according to the minister, is not the Land Youth Act, but the way the law itself is being administered, adding that from 2017 to date, the ministry has signed and issued over 5,000 certificates of occupancy to Nigerians. He noted that the National Housing Program, initiated by the President Muhammad Buhari led administration, is progressing in 34 states. The message I intend to share is that housing provision is a collaborative effort by all levels of government and by the private sector. Governor Amin Wazir Tambol described the move to provide adequate shelter for Nigerians and reposition the housing sector 
in the country. Tambwal said the theme for the 11th meeting no doubt creates hope for Nigerians toward addressing the critical challenges of the housing sector. I therefore appeal to this council to come up with whatever policy that would be implementable with ease, with ease, so that states and other stakeholders can access funding for housing schemes. Tambol noted that the digital geographical information system initiated by the Sokoto state government has put the face for effective land administration, saying his administration has been investing huge resources in various urban development reforms. And results are quite visible in Sokoto, Dalato Abdullahi, NTA News. To ensure that a greater number of women participate in the forthcoming election and reduce voter apathy amongst women folk, the Federation of Muslim Women Association of Nigeria, Form 1, Kebi State Chapter, has held a sensitization program across the state. Abdullahi Umar Lelulu reports. The role of women in election cannot be neglected as they have the highest voting strength in Nigeria. It is this common knowledge that informed the decision of the association to embark on massive grassroots awareness aimed at ensuring the participation of all eligible women in the forthcoming election. To make this happen, women have to register and collect their permanent voter cards. The state secretariat of the association also directed Amiras of the 21 local governments in the state to escalate the sensitization to achieve the desired result. We have organized 21 local government and 225 what that we have. And we have also conducted a sensitization in areas and communities and showed them the importance of voters' education, the importance of doing registration. And we have also sensitized our women to come out during the voting to come out and cut their bus. Other stakeholders informed the women gathering that without collecting their PVCs, their choice candidates cannot be voted in, and by extension, their future and that of their children will be in the hands of their undesired leaders. It is very important because uh, if you don't educate the women, most of the women that are in the, in the rural areas will not feel they will not be obliged to to see that they, they get registered and it is very, very important. They charge women in the state to also encourage other women in their various localities to enroll in the voter registration exercise and ensure collection of the PVCs. Abdullah Omar Illalu, NTA News. Well, those are the stories from Sokoto. Nationwide will continue at Medugri after this commercial break. From Sokoto, welcome to Medigree on Nationwide. Now we begin with security. A total of 6,000 personnel of Multinational Joint Task Force, MNJTF, from all the contributing countries have been honored in recognition of their efforts in the counterinsurgency operations in the Lake Chad Basin. Borneo State Governor Professor Babagana Omar Azulum, who attended the medal parade at the MNJTF headquarters in Jamena, Chad Republic, acknowledged gallantry of the Joint Task Force in stemming the tide of insurgency in the region. Miamina Garba reports that defense ministers and dignitaries from member countries witnessed the event. The medal parade is a sacred military tradition of appreciating efforts of deserving personnel. The awards include medals for military staff officers who have completed their statutory tour of duty and those who participated in the recently concluded Operation Lake Sanity, among others. Sector commanders will at a later date decorate their own officers. Borno State Governor Babagana Umara Zulum, who took part in decorating the awardees, was also honored in recognition of his continuous support to ending the insurgency. The governor called on the MNJTF and governments of member states to support the ongoing surrendering of terrorists for lasting peace to be achieved. I expect for the MNJTF to provide full support to the government of Borno State, to provide full support to the government of Nigeria, with a view to ensuring that our refugees in the LCBC countries are returned. 
Post Commander Multinational Joint Tax Force Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim one described the event as unique as the force is commemorating its seven years since it was reoperationalized and reorganized in July 2015, hence the unveiling of its Made in edition of magazine. I remain proud of the efforts of the Multinational Joint Tax Force and I assure you we will continue to remain on course towards the attainment of our mandate. Some award recipients thank the force for the medal. The force commander and other top brass of MNJTF theater commander operation had in K and that of the air component among others were also honored. The MNJTF medal parade is a moral booster for personnel that have contributed immensely to the restoration of relative peace from the MNJTF headquarters in Germany, Chad. Memuna Garba, NTA News. National Electoral Commissioner of INEC in charge of Northeast Subregion of Borno, Pochi, and Yobe states has visited Borno on assessment and appraisal of the continuous voter reg cards registration exercise in its closing phases. Resident Electoral Commissioner, among other Borno State INEC officials, accompanied the National Electoral Commissioner, Major General Modibo Awokar Alkari, retired to some registration centers within the and outside Medugri metropolis. Paul Kujavana reports. Two days to the closing date of continuous voter card registration, coupled with growing awareness amongst the populace about power of vote in nation's building. Nigerians and people of Borno in particular are coming out in mass to get registered to obtain their PVCs. Going around some of the registration centers, the National Electoral Commissioner, Major General Modibo Abubakar al Ali retired, interacted with registrants and officials in the centers where they all expect determination to get registered. I don't know that the nation will be like this. Now, I, am, I, am, I have too much The time frame is almost gone, so we ask for the government to extend so that we all have our PVs and votes. At places with massive registrants, INEC are sure to deploy more machines and personnel to ensure that they are all captured before the closing date of Sunday, 31st July 2022. The PVC is not over the counter purchase, it has a timeline and a process. So you can see INA has a lot of timeline, and if one clash with the other, it will affect the other one. The National Electoral Commissioner in charge of Borno, Bauchi, and Yobe State, with the state officials of INEC, visited MMC and Jere local councils, as well as the state mechanical workshop. We are mostly ADPs from Kukawa, Gubiu, Magumeri, and Ngaze local government areas are being captured. In Medugri, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. That is all from Medugri Nationwide. We'll continue with Lami in Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. Now, we need to document history so that people coming after us can see things in their true perspectives. This was the message of media veteran Cordelia Okoma to guests at the launch of her book, Accidental Journalist in Nigeria's Political and Economic History. Uyeyemi Ajay reports that the book comes as part of activities marking her retirement from service after 35 years of active journalism with the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. So, putting pen to paper is a Herculean task, which they avoid when they can. But for Cordelia Ukwama, it is what she did for 35 years as a journalist, working with the Nigerian Television Authority. The 15 chapter book, Accidental Journalist in Nigeria's Political and Economic History, is an autobiography which captures Ukwama's life and her work in journalism, something she was initially unprepared for, but one which became her passion. In the course of her professional career, she was involved in such high octane engagements as covering an international sporting event, the under 16 junior handball tournament in 1989. For many, her experience and vast knowledge is worthy of sharing, with emphasis that women must begin to document their achievements for the younger generation to apply. This is part of the history of Nigeria now, and we need people to document their experiences. So for she to have been able to combine this with her line of duty, 
it's very commendable. Women in MTA are doing good. I also wrote a book, so she has written one. I, uh, uh, Eugenia Abutu has written. I hope that more women would write. I never set out to be a journalist, but I fell in love with the job and uh, it's the passion that kept me moving. That passion kept me going. And uh, I will be a journalist for life. No, I think the NT has a deliberate plan to ensure that uh, the senior ones mentor the younger generation. There is a need for continuity. The 238 page book chronicles not only the author's role, but also the role of the largest television station in Africa, NTA, towards the nation's growth and development. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. And that report closes the chapter on Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Remember to join the NTA in the campaign against rape and rapists. Have a blessed weekend.